Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chris M., and I would like to invite you to a live radio conversation about uh, the Kundalini and its possible process within you. Uh, today is the 6th and of February 2013. And in this conversation, I would like to discuss with you a discarnate consciousness. And what I mean by that is, is a spiritual consciousness that doesn't have a body. But before we get started, I would like to thank uh, Aaron Santara of uh, Ireland and, and uh, her family who have uh, put this... Uh, Blog Talk Radio uh, program together, and I want to thank them and uh, thank them for any and all of, of the people who are partaking of this of this program. This is a free program, and this is the uh, information that is fairly scarce on the internet. I know there's a lot of people who say they have this, this, or that, and more often than not, they you know they they. <laughs> They say they have what they really want to have, but they don't really have. This is for people who are really, really having the Kundalini. And this information that is coming to you is directly from the Kundalini, the Kundalini that has awakened in me uh, the past 22 years. So uh, there are other uh, opportunities to to uh, receive this information. One of them is... Kundalini Awakening Systems, the number one dot com. If you go to that website, uh, generously put on the the internet by Glenn Ola, and I'd like to to give Glenn a, a thank you and, a, and a, a shout of appreciation for the many people that have come to his website about the uh, Kundalini Awakening um, experience. Uh, on Yahoo Groups, you can go to the to a, the uh, Kundalini Awakening Systems, number one, at yahoogroups.com. And you can also visit on Facebook a uh, public group that is called Kundalini Awakening with an apostrophe after that. And uh, for Tantra, people that are interested in Tantra, I've been teaching Tantra for about seven years. Uh, on Yahoo, there is a Kundalini Awakening Systems one, the number one, Tantra and that is the teachings of Tantra. Uh, for those who are of a devotional quality, which I highly recommend, uh, there is a group on Facebook that is called Kundalini Ashram, and that is on Facebook, and uh, you, can, you can also partake of that. Uh, I would like to, to thank everyone who has listened to the show in the archives. We're averaging a little over a 1,000 people listening a week, and uh, and I just really, really would like to appreciate you, the listener, and how you, the listener, can help other people come into this information. It's it's extremely important in our times, uh, in this world, in this linear time zone, that people begin to accept and explore and enjoy their Kundalini Awakening experience. Uh, and so, w- without... Without further ado, let's let's get right into the to the issue of discarnate entities. Well, often, when a person is coming into the Kundalini, uh, the the their energetic anatomy uh, begins to thin. And what I mean by that is, I'd like you to imagine yourself as a light bulb, and I'd like you to imagine yourself with a with a uh, a lampshade around that light bulb. And that lampshade directs your your luminosity in a certain way and allows you to live within the five sense linear world. Of the five senses being the physical, the emotional, the mental, the psychological, and the spiritual. And so within that context, your lampshade is basically keeping you on a on a path that allows you to to live your life uh, in the various ways that your karma and and uh, your choices will allow you to live it well when kundalini begins to come into the equation little holes or windows can develop within that lampshade 
And when that occurs, your consciousness has the opportunity to reach into another uh, spiritual dimension that uh, before that was not quite accessible except during the dream state. This is during your conscious awaking, awake moments. As, the, as you begin to have your consciousness seep through these windows in the lampshade that, that is about five feet out from the typical human body, I, I must say, too, I'm not talking in absolutist terms here. Everybody is slightly different. We all have our own unique uh, experience and, and energetic anatomy within the Kundalini. So I just don't want you to think that when I say something that, that I'm, I'm uh, taking out any and all other possibilities. I'm not. I'm just trying to give you a generalized, typical uh, understanding of what can occur with the Kundalini. That being said, as your consciousness begins to seep out through these windows... Uh, in your energetic anatomy, um, the the spiritual consciousness that operates outside of your of your physical five sense understandings can reach in, and when that occurs, you may begin to hear voices, or you may begin to hear celestial music, or you may begin to see faces, or you you may begin to experience. Uh, discarnate consciousness inflicting itself upon your physical awareness. <laughs> this is enough to really make you think you're going crazy. Uh, you know, you, you, you're seeing disembodied body parts maybe coming out of the walls or whatever. It, you know, it resembles a really bad... Um, I was going to say, I guess a really bad LSD trip. I've never taken LSD, so I, I can't say for a fact. Maybe some of you out there can relate to it, though. Uh, it, it, it really begins to to work its way into your awareness, often as a as a sign of of mental illness or or something that is to be uh, feared, and. This, this this is a fairly common response, so I don't want you to think that oh my gosh, if I'm afraid of this, then I'm then I must be out of the ordinary. No, no, no. You're you're far more within the understanding than uh, than you might you know, you might consider. Uh, this is what drives a lot of people into the into the psych hospitals. So between this and the kriyas, you know, the kundalini can be you know, a fairly challenging experience to those who do not have information about it. Uh, the kriyas will make you feel like you have a neurological disorder. And, oh, oh, and speaking of kriyas, I, I would like to thank everybody who has listened to that show. I know it was very uh, uncoordinated. It looks like uh, Blog Talk Radio did a big uh, overhaul of their program, and that may have affected our program. Uh, when, when we when we did it last week, so anyway, yeah, uh, this can the, the kriyas can make you feel like you have a neurological disorder, and the entities, discarnate entities, can make you feel like you're just going crazy, like you you have a mental illness, and this is not the case in either of these two uh, phenomena associated with kundalini. Uh, as as these windows develop in your in your energetic anatomy. Slowly but surely, Kundalini is letting you know, ah, ah, it is not all a five-sense world. There are many more experiences beyond our five perceptions that we get to partake of. And, oh, my gosh, you know, this. even though this wasn't taught to you in the Western world, well, that doesn't mean that it's not the case. It just means that it wasn't taught to you. This is is a very important understanding. There is more spiritual consciousness without a body than there is uh, consciousness within a physical body. You're vastly outnumbered. Uh, coming into the world with a physical body is is like a, a a scuba diver going into the ocean, you know, an extremely populated ocean. Okay, so so just so you understand that there there is. M just like there are many more forms of bacteria and virus and fungi and, you know, many of the uh, 
of the, of the spiritual creation, physical creation that we have on this world, so too, and, and even more so, are there that many levels of discarnate entity consciousness uh, outside of our five sense paradigm. So just know this. They are not all there to scare. Some of them are. Some of them are there to challenge your willingness to go into fear. I'm going to talk about that. Uh, often within the Kundalini context, the transformation of the human being that is taking place through the Kundalini uh, begins to go into your past, and, and we're talking your many lives past, and bring up many of the issues that are that may be causing you problems uh, with regards to accepting the growth and the transformation that is being given by the Kundalini. And so these develop as blockages on your path. And what the Kundalini will do is it will bring up these challenges to you and say, okay, Chrism, here you go. Here's an entity that, that can probably scare you. So boom, there comes that entity. It comes right through that window. And as as Chrism experiences this entity, and of course, you know, fear is one of the first responses that what will occur, but with more information, you have less of a need to allow fear to sculpt your choices. Uh, and so at first, yes, you will you'll have fear, and, and you'll, you'll wonder what the heck is going on. But because you have this information, and, and I want you to know that lots of people, many, many people, the, the majority of people that have had Kundalini have had the entity experience. Okay, they know. They know the, what I'm talking about here, and you will too, uh, you know, as you come further along the Kundalini path. So as you as you as you begin to experience these entities, and it may start off with something as innocuous as a knock on the wall, like that. You know, just, even the cat or the dog will notice that something just hit the wall twice, and so you know it's real. You know it's a, it's a real sound. It's not something that just you are experiencing. Okay, so as this occurs, you know, you can begin to understand that, oh, okay, this is an entity. And you don't need to go into the fear. The less a person goes into fear over entities or kriyas or any of the kundalini phenomena, the better that person's kundalini journey is going to be. But we all have fear. We all have fear because we come into this from behind the veil. And so to a certain degree, you know, we will experience a... Uh, a surprise at some of these occurrences. Now, these entities will come into your dreams. They will come into your waking life. They will come into your life as a sound or a uh, a movement of, of physical uh, possessions that you may have, like, say, a you know, movement of a coffee cup or the disappearance of keys or things of that nature. And I don't want you to be afraid of that anymore. If you've had that happen, there's no need for you to fear this anymore. So just know that. Know that these entities are out there and they exist. Now, for the Kundalini Awakening person, the entities seem to know because of your energetic signature, the way they see your energetic anatomy, your brilliance is becoming more intense than those around you. Uh, People, if you're standing in line at the grocery store and, and uh, you know, you're standing with you know, seven or eight people, your light will burn the brightest because the kundalini is awakening within you. And as this occurs, well, then, just like here in the physical world, where the bright light will attract the most insects, well, so in the... In the uh, in the astral and the physical blended world, will your light, your brilliance, attack, or attract the most entities, the most of the discarded entities? And they come in all different shapes and sizes. Some are just the size of a mosquito. Some are, you know, 10, 11, 12 feet tall. Some are, are happy. You know, they're here to bring joy. Some are there to scare. And in many cases, the ones that are there to scare serve the most valuable purpose for the Kundalini Awakening person because it, it begins to force you to work on your fear issues. 
Your fear of not being in control of your life. Oh, my God. You've just lost control of your life because you're seeing things that nobody else is seeing. And they're talking with you and or screaming at you or cussing at you or laughing at you or chiding you or deriding you or, you know, many many of the different ways that, that these entities will interact with people in the West. Uh, and, and, and I must say that people in the West will have much a, a much different um, experience with the entities than people in the East. People in the East have, in their culture, they have more of, a, of an acceptance of, of some of the qualities that allow uh, these phenomena to be explained. Whether or not they're explained correctly doesn't really matter, but it, it gives them a, a foothold in this area that the people in the West, you know, haven't been given through through science and you know the over reliance on science and the and the uh, the uh, subjugation of religion to you know corrupt forces. Not all religion, just some of it. So so here in the West, we we get to to basically take it in a way that is blunt. It is a blunt force. Uh, psychological, emotional trauma upon us. And so really, 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 uh, you can listen to my radio broadcast till the cows come home, but when this happens to you, then you begin to understand what I'm talking about. But it's good. It's good to have uh, information before the event so that you can begin to, to find reference points for it. Uh, so with the entities... Uh, Many will try to communicate with you, uh, and, and it'll, it'll lots lots of time. Most of the time, it's going to be a telepathic communication. Do not engage in conversation with these discarnate entities. Most of the time, you're dealing with lower vibrational uh, spiritual consciousness that is there to to scare you or to corrupt your process or to tempt you into falling into some of the lower vibrational expressions such as hatred or fear or anger or lust or power or greed or, you know, things of that nature. Uh, like attracts like in some degrees. So if you have, if you have these uh, expressions right now, uh, you may attract these kind of entities towards you. And I will counsel you right now not to initiate communication with them. Do not communicate with these with these consciousness. So as you as you encounter these these uh, these entities, uh, stick to the middle path. Uh, this middle path is described in many of the ancient texts from the ancient uh, uh, mystical uh, mathematics of three to the the middle pillar uh, understandings from the Buddhists, uh, the Shusunda of the uh, of the ancient Sanskriti people, uh, the middle path is very important. So imagine that you're you know you're in a canoe floating down a river and you've got a bunch of activity going either side of you and they're full of entities. Well, you just take that middle path and you just kind of ignore what's on the shore. Often, when you give your attention, you give permission for communication. So if you're shouting at them saying, no, go away, da, 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 you know, cussing at them saying, no, 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 stay out of me, da, 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 well, you're, you're feeding into the program of either fear or anger or defense. Defense is, a, is often a level of fear, you know, to stay out of my space type of an attitude. And, and this can actually engender more actions upon you, you know, from the discarnate uh, uh, areas. Most of the time, uh, you will not have a person that you can go to that will wave their hand over your head and say, oh, entities be gone. There is no entities be gone uh, service that I know of in, in the United States. Uh, but I'm not going to say that there, it's impossible. You know, the, 
it is possible to get rid of the entities from an outside to inside vector, but most of the time these entities are serving a kundalini purpose. And that purpose is to is to have you get rid of your fear. I've had a student who has had entity contact for uh, over a year and a half. And uh, she's a brilliant, brilliant student, wonderful person. And yet, because we're not dealing with the, the five-sense paradigm where, where most of our brilliance is is uh, validated, you know, we're dealing with issues in our past, issues in uh, in our in our fear matrix that that we have to deal with. And so, you know, this person has had these entities, and they come in, and you know, they you actually get you can be possessed by these entities. As I'm talking about the Kundalini person, you can, you can also be possessed in, in a non-Kundalini awakening format, but I'm sticking strictly here to the Kundalini as much as I can without diverging too much. These these entities, when they come into your body, you actually often people will feel an energetic shift, uh, a wave of, of sensation uh, within the body, uh, one time I had an entity jump into my arm as I was laying on my bed uh, uh, trying out a, uh, a mantra that I that I had created uh, for some students. And, and I was laying on the bed and I was really, really, really working the mantra very strongly. Beautiful mantra, beautiful prayer. And I felt the little footsteps coming along the bed. And before I could respond quickly enough, that entity jumped into my arm. And I felt it coursing and swimming through my energetic circulatory system. And, you know, it kind of irritated me. But, you know, as I'm going to suggest to you, the greater your evolution is within the Kundalini, anything that's riding with you is forced to evolve as well. So as as you evolve in a positive, beautiful uh, Kundalini experience, Anything that is attached to you or within you that's artificially, you know, it uh, put itself inside you, placed itself uh, within you, is forced to evolve as well. And if they can't do it, they leave. They leave. This is the best way to get rid of an entity influence. Also, to make definitive choices, to not communicate with them. If they have no one to communicate with, well... All the fun is gone. There's no more fear. This person is not having any more fear. And, and like any predator, they'll go to another they'll go to another victim that maybe will give them more of a fear response. In the in the entity world, fear can be seen as a form of food, a form of uh, nutritious uh, uh, food that they can use to perpetuate you know what they're here to do. So if you don't give them any food, if you if you cut off the food supply, they're going to leave. They are going to leave. So if you're not emitting waves and waves of fear, then you're doing well. I want you to think about that for a second. Think about that. The less you fear, the better things are going to go for you. Fear is a very, very important subject. And there is no greater fear uh, from a psychological standpoint than having your head, you know, filled with consciousness that you have no idea of how you got them, what they came there, what their agenda is. You just know that all of a sudden you've got a hundred voices in your head screaming at you for your attention. And I will just counsel you to just say, oh, ah, uh, just say the oh. And the arm is, that is what you focus on. That is what your attention is zeroed in on. And, you know, as you as you, as you vocalize this, that will have a definitive effect on, on the entities and their contact with you. And as you do this, you'll realize that 
wow, there really is no need to fear any more than I fear mosquitoes or fleas or, you know, plants, you know, as you're walking through the, the forest. You don't need to fear these things. They're unknown to you at first. So, of course, you know, we all jump into fear with the unknown. But as that unknown becomes more understood, then there's no need to fear. So, once again, so you're having entity contact, they're filling your head, you feel them coursing throughout your system. Now, if you happen to be in Peru, in the in the upper Andes region of Peru, uh, there are some... Uh, the, the Blue Tribe, I forget what their name is, uh, they have they have the ability to to put a put a uh, an entity that's coursing through your body into a crystal and then they put the crystal over a a flame and they heat that crystal up. So you can't have a, a crystal with fractures in it because then it'll it'll pop, it'll explode. So you want to have a, a perfectly uh, faultless crystal, quartz crystal, clear quartz crystal, about four to five, six inches long, and and this is this is a, a technique um, Alberto Violdo and uh, the the, uh, the the tribe that he's associated with in the Peruvian mountains. Uh, I have never been, I have never seen this occur, but I did talk with uh, Albert, Alberto in person, and and he he validated some of the uh, crystals that I've had for this purpose. And then yeah, and then the uh, the entity is drawn into the crystal, and the crystal is put over a fire, and the entity is allowed to to evolve back into to its own spiritual evolution. So there are ways, and there are people that, that may just come up to you wave their hands around you and say, okay, no more entities. But I don't support that so much. I want you to have your entities. I want you to learn to control your fear. I do not want that lesson taken away from you. And you're going to hear a phone here, but I'm not going to answer it. Stand by one moment. Yes, I want you to have this experience. I want you to be able to to control your energetic evolution, or at least to be, to respond in the most appropriate fashion to your energetic evolution. Uh, just as a child is learning to to crawl, well, we don't swoop down on that child, pull them up, and and, and put them on their legs, you know bypassing the whole crawling stage. We don't do that. We let them crawl. We let them explore what it's like to be on all fours before you know they, they get up on, on their two legs. Well, it's the same with this part of the Kundalini evolution. You don't just, you know, jerk a person off of, off of their, you know, their uh, process. You allow them to experience that process. You allow that process to to educate them and to evolve them in the ways that that uh, that, that process or that experience is evolving them. And this is this is what we do with the entities. So we don't run around in circles, putting uh, you know ice on top of our heads or clove oil here and there or, you know, any of the various uh, remedies that that you run into on the web from these various teachers, you know, responding to the fear of a Kundalini person's experience and, and trying to remedy it through uh, things you could find in the kitchen. You don't need to put salt on your head or any of these things. What you need to do is you need to ground yourself from the feet or the base of your spine into the earth, just like a tree, and allow your fear to go away. Listen to this information. Kundalini is as natural to your human system as this your skin is, as your hair is, as your interaction with the physical world is. It's a natural force, and it's not a force to be 
to be uh, short-circuited because of ego-based fear issues. So as these entities come into your presence, realize that, oh, okay, that's an entity. And you're pretty, they're, they're fairly easy to spot. I mean, first of all, nobody else will see them. <laughs> Second of all, uh, you know, they're, they're, they have an attitude. They're there to scare you or they're there to uh, dominate you or to give you information that is often bogus. Entities will lie to you. They will not tell the truth. And they lie and they lie and they lie upon lies. And so this is another reason that I'm really going to suggest that you do not communicate with them. Do not initiate a conversation. Don't even look at them. So as, as, this, as this occurs, you know, you know if, if you have already initiated a conversation and, and they're talking to you, I want you to realize that now that you have this information, you stop the conversation. Stop it. Do not answer their questions. Do not respond to whatever is said to you or whatever is done to you. You know, people can be bitten or, you know, have little stings here and there on their body, depending on how how uh, entrenched their uh, their communication has become with these discarnate entities. By the way, discarnate is Latin for without flesh. Okay, so an entity without flesh. And so that pretty much describes a spiritual entity or a spiritual consciousness. As these entities try to interact with you, you just don't acknowledge them, say the alm as I did, or, you know, walk out into the environment, stay grounded, realize that, oh, okay, this is, these are the entities that Chris have talked about. It. And I'm not going to fear them, but I'm not going to engage them in any kind of communication as well. Um, you know, and, and they may still try to come through you. They may, you know, uh, try to take you over, try to, to work their way through you. And you just don't buy into it. You know, claim the seniority over your body. You are the only one, you and your kundalini, which is basically you, are the only one that has any legitimate right to your body. And yet, as the kundalini comes up and those windows form in your energetic anatomy, well, you know, the kundalini is saying, okay, this is, this is part of the new, the new uh, understandings that you have, and so let's see how you deal with this. And so she, being the consummate teacher that the kundalini is, it will give you uh, these challenges during your process. Oh. Well, I'm hearing some in for interference here. Uh Aaron, are you are you uh are you still on? I'm still on. I just amused it there but I haven't you sound the same to me. Okay, all right. So so as the uh as this entity interaction occurs Allow yourself to understand what is occurring. Uh, your body will respond. You'll feel a, often a person will feel a tactile response to an entity's presence. Uh, sometimes you'll wake up in the middle of the night and you'll see them on you. And they come in, like I said, the various shapes and sizes uh, and with various intentions as well. Don't be afraid. And I know you will at first. Because some of them come in these very monstrous forms. Um, and, you know, in the, with the idea of these monstrous forms, you know, they come in, in ways that are there to scare. And many of them have the, uh, like, say if you go into the big city like London or, or New York or L.A., um, you could have yeah, okay. You could have the tall hat phenomena. These are the entities with the tall pointy hats. They look like really tall wizards or sorcerers. And once again, they're there to scare. And you'll feel 
a, a, a wave of fear coming off of these individuals. Once again, say your mantra. If you have a mantra, say the om. You know, if you have the om and really, really begin to cultivate a non-challenging and yet solid uh, reference point of fearlessness within you. That's the whole purpose. For, for the Kundalini opening you to entities is for you to be able to control your fear. And as I mentioned, that other student who who's having uh, the Kundalini entities come to her, she, by now, she has really established a, a, a good uh, technique. <laughs> I'm hearing this, in, this distortion in the... Uh, I hope people aren't experiencing that. Uh, if they are, you know, hey, this is this is Blog Talk Radio, and I'm not quite sure how we drive this any better. They only give you limited options on what you can do. But I see the on-air sign is still here, so I'll keep talking. Uh, oh, oh, let me give you the call-in number. Here's a guest call-in number. It is area code three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. That's three four seven. Nine three four zero zero two six. But feel free to call in. Call in if you have any questions about this type of a thing. I'm not. Uh, uh, I, I I am fully open to you asking any of these questions or any question that pertains to the Kundalini. So once again, three four seven nine three four zero zero two six, and ask the question that many many other people are asking at the same time. Okay, so as this uh, as this young lady uh, began to develop her fearlessness, and and it, in many ways uh, she used anger and and a, and a and a steadfast resolve in not allowing these discarded entities to to dominate her life. You know, and she had she had my help as well, but. You know, I wasn't stepping in so much to take the entities away. I was just helping her to to find her her faith in herself, and she's doing so well now. And I would I would wish uh, that all of you who are experiencing entities uh, could come into it the way she has. And she's done very very well, and she's listening there. And I just want to say congratulations, job well done, keep going. Uh, at the onset of Kundalini or, or of a Kundalini induced entity possession, and it does feel that way, uh, these entities will come in, and all of a sudden, uh, you'll be guided to rearrange your house. You'll be guided to get rid of the food in the refrigerator and, and replace it with food that they want you to have. Uh, they'll you'll you'll give the clothing away that they don't want you to have they'll give the books away that they don't want you to read and they'll they'll give you a, a you know a certain kind of thing to do uh they'll initiate uh sexual uh interactions that you wouldn't normally have uh, some of this can get you in trouble so be advised Some of this can get you in trouble, and, and I want you to really resist it. If, it. if if you are directed to do anything that is outside of the ethical, uh, the high extreme uh, consideration-based ethical uh, morals of the society you live in, don't do it. It's not Kundalini. It's not God telling you to do these things. It's merely discordant entities telling you to do these things. And so what What does this teach you? Well, let's say, okay, uh, Kristen has an entity in him, and he's, to, you know, the entity is saying, okay, Kristen, I want you to go flatten all the tires in the neighborhood. This is God. I am God speaking, and you must go flatten all the tires because God wants those tires to be flat for some reason. And, then, and you think this you know, I'm not going to go around flattening all these tires. That's a terrible thing to do. Tires are expensive. And I'm not going to do something so inconsiderate and, and, and hurtful to other people. So you know that that's an entity. 
And so whatever you are told to do, even if it's a good thing by an entity, don't do it. Do not do it. You you do not take orders from discarded entities. The only thing that you'll really take an order from is your kundalini or a teacher. If you have a living teacher, a flesh teacher, uh, yeah, 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 you could, you know, you could listen to that person. So, so realize this. So, if if you come in to the entity possession thing, they will come at you during your sleep time. They'll come at you during your waking time. Don't tell anyone about this. This is not handled well by people who are not awakening. They don't get it. They just think you're nuts. And and they think you're crazy. And it just makes them really, really terrified. And then they want to, you know, call an ambulance and have you, you know, committed to a psych ward so that the MDs who also don't understand Kundalini can, can fill you full of drugs that will mask but not remove uh, what's happening to you. Okay, so I want you to really, really understand that. Uh, you don't really get to share this with people so much. Now, yes, if you have a loved one or a spouse or a, or a, a friend who, who you know understands this, well, that's something else. That's something else. Um, uh, let's see. Can I have someone call in to make sure that this is going out over the air? Eileen, if you could call in or somebody call in, I want to make sure, because I'm getting some static here, and I don't want to just talk to the thin air here. Uh, so somebody please call in. The number is 347-934-0026. And let us know. If the uh, blog talk radio technical issues have been resolved, hopefully you're hearing this on the computer or, or whatever. So please give us a call, 347-934-0026. So, yes, uh, if these entities come and they're possessing you and uh, you just need to really look at your ethical systems, look at your ethics, look at your morals, and then stick to those. Okay, if, if you're being instructed within those within those ethical foundations, then great, great. But if you're if being instructed outside of those uh, physical uh, situations, well, then you stick to those ethics. I see we have some callers. Thank you, folks, for calling in. Uh, um, Aaron, can you can you hook him up? Okay, let's see if I can do this. Hello, Eileen? Yes, this is me. You're coming across fine. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for calling, Eileen. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, all right, bye-bye. Keep going, bye. And, and let's see, and Hello. Uh, 586-991-06033. Who am I speaking with? Yeah, it's coming over really well. Um, oh, over the thank internet. you, sir. Mm-hmm. Who am I speaking with? This is Fosche. Fosche, Fosche. Thank you, sir. <laughs> of thank course. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Very Bye. good. Very good. Okay, all right then. So this is this is going out there. All right. So very good. So the entities come and they take you over and they're and they're directing you to do certain things. So once again, if it's outside of the moral authority that your culture and your society dictates, which it often will be, do not do it. Um, because Kundalini does not have sexual barriers. Uh, you know, sometimes these entities will inflict themselves on your sexual areas, your first and second and uh, third chakras. So you may feel the body becoming aroused. You may feel the body wanting to do things of a sexual nature that you would never have done before. This is entity contact. It is not you. If it's not love-based uh, uh, sexual excitation, uh, 
that something else is occurring. And I want you to have a real strong look at what may be occurring for you in that area and make sure that it is within the higher ethical foundations of the culture and the society that you live in. And if this means that you you, you don't uh, uh, have sex with people in, within cer- certain circumstances, well, then don't do that. You know, if, the, if, a, if, a, if an entity is directing you to to go to a pornography uh, place, what do they call them, a, a bar where there is a lot of pornography or something like that, you know, alcohol and pornography, uh, perfect, uh, perfect system for allowing entities to come into your body. Uh, if you're if you're being guided to go there, well then don't go. Go and meditate. Go and pray. Do your do your own. Do your chanting. Do do whatever uh, uh, system that you're involved with. And it's not that you're it, that you're refusing out of fear. You're not. You're claiming your space. You're claiming your spiritual path. You're claiming your kundalini evolution. You are choosing. You are choosing. You are making a choice. And your choice is not to succumb or to fall victim to uh, to spiritual, negative spiritual entity uh, uh, incursion within your system. So so there you go. This is... This is uh, this is very similar to the uh, uh, crucible of reversal that I teach, where if an entity tells you to do something that is hurtful to another person, well, you go ahead and you reverse that, and you do, you know, say, for instance, says, okay, I want you to harm that elderly person. And you turn around and you, and you go, well, no, I'm not going to harm that elderly person. I'm going to help an elderly person. So every time, Every time uh, an entity tells you to hurt or harm somebody, you turn it around and you make it a loving expression, a loving interaction. And, you know, they, they begin to lose interest. Their job is not there to to help people. They're there to scare people. And as you claim your own path and you claim your own uh, choices within this Kundalini Awakening path, well, uh, you know, those who would try to remove your ability to make choices or decisions on this path will leave. They will leave or they'll just go quiet. Often they'll just go quiet. Now, along along the lines of these direct uh, entity incursions, you'll see a lot of strange things, but you'll see a lot of beautiful things too. Uh, beautiful lights, uh, beautiful uh, orbs. You may see a lot of orbs if you're familiar with the orb phenomena. Uh, if you, uh, I don't know if we have any of those uh, up on the uh, internet or not. Well, yeah, if you just if you just Google orbs, O R B S, uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. These these are spiritual consciousness that that have kind of come through the uh, the physical barrier, the physical divide, and you can see them. You can see them on photography. Uh, sometimes you can see them with your physical eye. The, the Kundalini awakened person can see them with the physical eye, but they're not so much an orb shaped as I, at least in my experience. In my experience, uh, they're more floating suns, little pinpoints of light that have uh, an extreme brightness, and they'll come floating around you and looking at you. And they come in various colors: red, blue, green, white, gold, things of that nature. Uh, and uh, typically they're not there to to uh, harm you. They're more there just out of, sometimes it's support. Sometimes it's in a support mode. But it allows you to see some of the beauty that is within the discarnate realm as well. It's not all hurt and, 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 and fear and all of this stuff. A lot of it is because... The reason why you have a lot of fear and hurt and and uh, uh, you know attempted possession is because the Kundalini itself wants you to own your space. The Kundalini wants you to make the choices that uh, that allow your spiritual evolution within the Kundalini context to occur. And there is no better teacher than you being given the options 
to make the right choice. So once again, stay with your high ethics. Stay with your high morality. Okay. The Kundalini lets this in because as you experience fear, your fear is being given a, you're being given an opportunity to release that fear, to take that fear out of your system. You're, you're being changed into a divine embodiment. Uh, some of the ancient texts would call it the flesh made divine or the divine flesh. This is what is happening to you. The Kundalini is a transformation process. And the temple of divinity that your body is being turned into uh, cannot be built with bricks of fear. So the Kundalini begins to cleanse your your body and your mind and your emotions and your psychology and your spirituality, it begins to cleanse it by offering you the, op- the opportunity to make choices that remove fear from your system. So it's very important. This is why I don't support people coming up, waving their hand and saying, okay, entities be gone. Because you've just taken out this incredibly amazing uh, platform of education and evolution for the person. Most people who can get rid of an entity know that, though. They know it. And yes, it is a bother. Oh, my God. These these entities can be a real nuisance. A real nuisance. And even in, you know, in my earlier teachings, I was helping people get rid of the entities and whatnot before my Kundalini said, wait, wait, wait. What are you doing, Kristen? This is very important stuff for people to to hear, to experience. Guide them how not to have fear in their system. Don't try to take away the obstacle that is causing them fear. You're just taking away the fear teacher. So I had to shift. I had to change. I had to modify how I was teaching about uh, entities. And, And for those of you who follow any of my writings, you'll see that I made a shift from getting rid of entities to uh, getting rid of your fear of entities. Once you get rid of the fear of entities, then the entities have really nothing to do. They either evolve or they exit. And many of them will just exit. Many of them will just exit. So don't don't feel that this is going to last for the rest of your life. It'll last for as long as is necessary for your process uh, to occur. So don't go into depression or fear or anything of that nature. Uh, you'll be able to find your way. Trust in your kundalini process. Trust in the awakening process within you. It knows you better than you know yourself. Kundalini knows you better than you know yourself, and it knows you better than the entities know you. Just because you have telepathy or clairvoyance or uh, psychometry or or any of the exalted uh, gifts that come with Kundalini, uh, it doesn't mean that in the earlier process, part of the process, that the entities cannot uh, use those vectors of interaction with you as a way to corrupt you. So once again, you know, don't do anything that they tell you to do. I know a lot of you have guides. And I'm going to suggest that the guides that you have right now, you know, good friends of yours, and uh, many of you are in, you know, real contact with them, they should step back and allow the Kundalini to teach you. They should not think that they can teach you better than the Kundalini itself teaches you. They are not divine. They are a spiritual entity. Perhaps not of a lower quality that that I that I've been speaking of uh for the past uh a few minutes. Uh they may be of a higher quality, but if they are a higher quality they will step back and they will allow the Kundalini to teach you. And actually, uh, the Kundalini is the supreme force, not your guide. You know, your guide, if it is a, if it is a, of a positive educational nature, 
should step back. If it continues to try to to manipulate you or teach you or, or, or things of that nature, then it isn't allowing you to learn. It is forcing itself upon you. And I want you to release yourself from that guide. Not in a bad way, not in a mean way. Just say, look, this is Kundalini. I need to learn from Kundalini now. We can talk later. <laughs> you know, after I die, we can, we can have a... We can talk. Okay. This includes people who don't have Kundalini but are teacher, but are spiritual teachers. Uh, these spiritual teachers who don't have Kundalini... Uh, but, but you know, they claim to be able to teach it. You know, you don't need that. Walk away from that. Don't learn Kundalini from people who don't have it. They don't have it. They can't teach you from something that they have no reference for except for what's been written in books. Okay. You know, so a lot of the teachers are listening to this conversation right now. Well, I'm going to say to you, teachers, get your Kundalini up first before you start counseling students of theirs. For the Reiki people who are sticking their hands up in the air going, oh, healing spirits of the universe, plug into my hands and give a loving healing to this person. No. No, no, no. Don't do that. Don't do that. They'll plug into your hands, and then as you put your hands on that person, they'll plug right into that person. You haven't done them any favors. You may get some phenomena. Their body may jerk and shake, and that may you may think that that's a validation, but it's not. It's not. So, at, you know, at, at all possible moments, do not bring in uh, entity incursions unless you know what you're doing. Now, let's go to John of God in Brazil. I've been to John of God's place three times now, and I've assisted him. And they have, the spiritist people have very strict uh rules and regulations on how an entity is to interact with corporate or, or corporeal corporeal physical uh, uh, consciousness, basically you and I. I I like I like uh what occurred down there. It, it's very tactile. It's you know it's a very Entity oriented place, but these are entities that that have uh, uh, a moral system in place at least they did when I was down there though things could change uh, you know as money gets in there and corruption sets in well even the entities themselves can become corrupt so you know I don't know that that's the case and I'm not suggesting that it is but I'm saying that that uh, within the spiritist movement. Uh, there are some very good protocols with regards to entities. And if you'll read any of the books that are that are written uh, through the spiritist movement as is practiced in uh, Abadjianya in uh, Brazil, uh, if you read those books, you'll see that there's a high spiritual focus, a high moral and ethical focus being given. And this is this is extremely necessary when you're working with these with these discarded entities. That's from a mediumship standpoint. Uh, often with Kundalini, people that have mediumship tendencies uh, will naturally gravitate into using entities as vectors of information and communication. And, and once again, um, as long as you stick to a high moral and ethical uh, interaction, uh, you force them to stay within that high moral ethical interaction as well. Uh, so I want to really, really underline that for you. Uh, never, never, never are you in this for personal gain. Never. That takes away the corruption that may that your own ego may develop within the interaction with discarded entities. I know some of you are mediums, and I don't have a problem with mediumship, but uh, I would suggest that you read... Alan, Alex Kardec, K-A-R-D-E-C. He is a uh, a writer from the 18th century or the 19th century, uh, who who really the spiritist movement in Brazil, at least the ones that I've uh, been associated with, 
uh, have modeled much of their interaction with entities around that information. Alan Alan Kardec, I believe it is, but it's K-A-R-D-E-C. And uh, look look that up on Amazon.com or any you know probably find it in your bookstores. Uh, it's 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 a uh, it's not in the society the Western society that we have right now. You have to remember, I mean, you know, pe- people during that time didn't really have electricity at all. So you know, it's it's within that society, a little different than ours, but it still has high quality advice about higher ethical and moral functions uh, with, when interacting with discarnate intelligence. And back with the Kundalini. Uh, many of these these discarnate uh, entities will want to to consume your energy, uh, your sexual energy. Uh, you'll find incubi and succubi, which are real. It's a real species of entity that you know will will initiate uh, sexual response from a person and come to them in the dream state to begin to have sex with them in the dream state, but also in the physical state as well. I don't want you to fall prey to that. Yes, it may feel good, but it is it is forcing you to get into the into the practice of, of losing your vital fluids uh for the for an entity to consume. And let me tell you you know they tried doing that with me, and you know they uh, you can get them. <laughs> uh, you know they they're smart. They're not stupid, and uh, in some ways they they serve a good purpose for people that are out. You know on these long ocean voyages, uh, like with the merchant marine or somebody like that, or you know somebody that has no sexual uh, outlet at all, and. Uh, Sometimes the uh, the incubi, the succubi can can perform a a positive service for that person, but for the Kundalini awakening person, absolutely not. Do not allow yourself to masturbate or become sexually stimulated by a discarded entity. Think about that, please. <laughs> okay. Don't do that. Uh, Man, I want you to keep your seed within you. Kundalini uses your seed and uh, brings it up the spine and and your endocrine system is being transformed uh, from the seed. And the the same with the women. You know, it's not, I mean, testicles and ovaries are basically the same thing. You just, in in a different gender. So uh, the energetics and the fluidic systems within the within the, the female also are pulled up into the spine. And so realize this, know this, appreciate this, and don't allow it to be consumed by a discarded entity, whether you call them an incubi, a succubi, or whatever by. Okay? Know that. Uh, it is now 27 minutes before the end of the program, and I'd like to open up the phone lines. Uh, the number is 347-934-0026. 347-934-0026. Please uh, feel free to call. Um, I just want to say that these entities are fairly common. Over 65, 70% of the people that are having a Kundalini Awakening event will in some way become uh, uh, open to discarnate persuasion. Uh, either through just curiosity or through a direct uh, infliction by the uh, by the entities themselves. Once again, I don't want you to believe what they tell you. And they're going to tell you, oh, don't listen to that Chris. He doesn't know what he's talking about. But your Kundalini will tell you that I do. That I do. Remember, your Kundalini itself, as it, as it pressures the base of your spine and you get a sore lower back and all of these things, the Kundalini itself will feel like a discarded entity, and it is, and it isn't. It is a divine force that is that is within you that, for most people, is dormant at the base of their spine in the last three vertebrae of the tailbone. It stays there for most people, and, and just 
helps guide their spiritual evolution. Well, when you come to the point in your physical lifetime existences, and that's a plural, I want you to realize that Kundalini has been guiding you towards its awakening the whole time. The whole time it has been guiding you towards your awakening of it within your body. Okay, so if this is happening to you in this lifetime, and I don't care how it happens, whether it's an automobile accident or a skiing accident or through meditation or yoga or martial arts or shakti pot or spiritual study or, you know, severe prayer practices, I don't care. This is your time to shine. This is your time to have the kundalini uh, expressing through you. And it may be also your time to have the entity interaction. Okay. And I, I really can't underscore it enough. I mean, it can really terrify a person. But I don't want you to realize that, that this is that you're the only one having this. Uh, I don't suggest anybody go to a psych ward over this. Seriously, don't suggest that. Uh, basically, they'll give you Depakote, and, and there you go, off into a stupor for a number of years. And so they don't really know how to treat this. And they're not bad people. They just don't know how to treat this. You know, the, in the medical text, it's it's called a spiritual emergency. That doesn't really give them any information because they're not spirituality-based. Even the Catholic doctors, you know, they're not spirituality-based, except when it comes to abortion or something, you know, that has a, is a hot political button, you know, reproductive things. So I want you to just take this information and... If you know somebody who is having kundalini and maybe struggling with it, I want you to talk with them about it. I want you to let them know it's okay. High ethical and moral expression uh, equates to a a control over your life that is outside of the entities. Now, the entities can scream at you 24-7. They'll cuss at you. They'll... They'll yell at you, they'll call you names, they'll tell you you're stupid. And one of the most common things they do tell you is to kill yourself. They'll say, oh, Chris, um, just kill yourself, dude. God, I mean, look at this. Look at you. Oh, my God. I think I think it's over for you, dude. I think you should just kill yourself. And you just need to ignore that. Do not let them control you. This is one of the, you know, this is a cause of suicide in our society today. Is people being infected by entities and being told to jump off the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Being told to, you know, to kill themselves or hang themselves or do whatever. And I'm telling you right now, don't do that. That will not help you. Let me say it again. Don't do that. It will not help you. What you do is the exact opposite, is you begin to celebrate your life. That's the reversal that I spoke of earlier. You begin to celebrate your life. You realize that you're being, you know, when an entity gives you this idea, you know, and often it'll just come as a, as a voice in your head or a thought out of the blue, if it's if it's in any way a suggestion to hurt yourself or hurt another person, do the exact opposite. Help yourself, help that other person. At the very least, you know, don't initiate any kind of activity towards those people. These serial killers that you see out there, uh, you know, these guys are possessed. These women are possessed. They are possessed by entities. Okay, not, and you're not going to turn into one. Don't get me wrong. You're not going to turn into one. You're just you're being given information now that that demonstrates and, and explains to you the kind of uh, interaction between the discarnate realm and the incarnate realm, or this the the, uh, the astral realm and the physical realm, or the spiritual realm, the physical realm that can happen. With Kundalini, the veil is being 
removed from you. So you get to see and interact with all the various life forms that exist beyond our five sense paradigm. And by virtue of that, they get to also interact with you. And so you need to learn how to, how to traverse these areas. And one of the most effective ways to traverse these areas is your high moral and ethical foundation. This is where the, you know, the, the, you know, you don't hurt people. Do no harm. And, and you know, it's the, the source of ahimsa within the, uh, within the, the uh, Hindu understanding, ahimsa, kill nothing, which is, you know, which is a good moral thing. I just, I think they mean that more towards uh, humans and, and maybe higher vertebrates. I mean, you know, when you breathe air, you might kill a virus that's coming in. So, I, you know, I don't know how far they extend it into, into the life form matrices. But, but it is a general good idea. Do as little damage to, to others and yourself as you possibly can do. Help others as much as you possibly can. Help others. The entities that are of a negative quality will not like that. The entities that are of a positive quality aren't interfering with you. You see it? Do you get that? I'll say it again. The entities that are of a negative, hurtful quality don't enjoy it when you do nice things. The entities that are of a positive, loving quality don't interfere with your kundalini process. The kundalini itself will begin to give you bliss and and severe love and just amazing levels of love. When you do the right thing, you'll start to cry because the, the it, you'll just start to cry so much. Think about that. Think about that. Okay. The kundalini will reward you for a job well done. And she does this, and I say she because it's the sacred mother at first who's coming up. Uh, she'll do this in order to help teach you that the appropriate response has been given. Uh, uh, so, so realize that. Realize that. Uh, and, and, I, and I do want to stress: not all, not all discarded entities are bad. Absolutely not. Not all guidance is bad. But guidance that assumes responsibility for your kundalini evolution, that I would question. And remember, this comes to you in your day-to-day existence. Day-to-day existence. How you respond to getting cut off on the freeway. How you respond to a tyrannical boss. How you respond to a loved one who is, who, who may not love you as much as you love them. How to respond to grief when a loved one passes away or a pet plus passes away. You know, these, these, these are areas. And there are many, many, many other areas. But I want you to look at some of these areas here. Entities will try to insert themselves into the fabric of your life. And I want you to just say, I want you to say, no, no. I am in charge of my kundalini evolution. I make the choices in my kundalini evolution. It belongs to me, and it is of me, and I will make the choices that my kundalini helps me to make. You'll be given a lot of instruction in your dream life. If you used to do a lot of flying or a lot of, you know, going to beautiful places or astral projection or any of these things, some of that may stop with the kundalini. Nothing is wrong. Nothing is wrong. It's just that now a different type of, of, of real-time education is taking place. And and with regards to the entities, you may see a lot of entities when you're going astral journey, things of that nature. Some of them will stick to you. Uh, once again, I want you to just keep your distance. Keep your distance. If the Kundalini allows you to continue doing your astral journeys, that's fine. Uh, and so, you know, it will also be with you during those astral journeys. So you may not blend completely. Like when you make when, when you blend with another per, with another soul uh, in the astral realms, you you 
it's 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 a blending like you really can't describe. It's like every facet, every experience, every portion of a person's existence is blended with another person's existence. So you basically become at one. It's very beautiful. It can be very, very beautiful. But if the Kundalini allows us, fine. If it doesn't allow it, don't go chasing after it. It's not for you at that time. Okay. Understand that. That's for you astral travelers out there. Uh, for for the people that are, you know, within this divine transformation, which kind of skips over the astral uh, in many ways, I want you to surrender to the divine transformation of the Kundalini, which does not counsel you to do mean or hurtful things to other people, like an entity would. It does not counsel you to hurt yourself, like an entity would. Okay. It will give you it will counsel you to respond to love, to love as it as you see it happening in front of you, two strangers, maybe somebody, you know, helping a child up who's fallen, crying, and, you know, they're helping them. Or, or you see somebody, out of the goodness of their heart, buy another person a meal who may not have enough money, or helping the homeless, or helping the sick, or helping, 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 assisting, bringing love into this world. That's what you want to do with the Kundalini. That's what it will teach you to do. Forgive the people that you may uh, feel have wronged you. Forgive that. It doesn't hurt them. It just hurts you if you hold a grudge. Forgive people as much as you possibly can. Be tolerant of people who are different than you whether they're different ethnicity, race, religion, society, culture, be tolerant and loving and accepting of those differences. It doesn't mean you have to adopt the differences. It just means that you accept their right to be as they are. Entities won't let you do that either. They want you to do it their way or a hurtful way in many ways. So know this. Now, if you have entities come into your dream life, and as you wake up, you still see them, don't be afraid. And most importantly, and I'm going to repeat this, entities are not God. They will say they are. They will say in a, you know, whatever voice that, that they feel that, that you recognize God to be, I am God. Thou wilt do my will upon the earth. You, know, you can just laugh at that. You can tell them that Cecil B. DeMille did it better. <laughs> Do not believe that. Do not believe that at all. Kundalini is God. <coughs> Kundalini is God. Kundalini is the direct divine connection. Not some entity, you know, speaking in a deep voice inside your head. So know this and understand this. And bring this into a clear understanding within yourself. Because, you know, these entities can, can communicate that way. Okay, so once again, with the entities, do not allow them to to guide you, to educate you, do not do what they ask you to do. Do not do what they tell you to do. Do not lash out in anger or fear or irritation as they really, you know, as they as they try to to inflict their their agenda upon you. They're a real force, but just like the mosquitoes in this for in the in the in the physical environment or viruses or bacteria, you know, if they're there to bother you slap them away or just walk away. That is that is how much fear you should have for them. And the only reason you know, you're having more fear is because, once again, they come from an unknown area. And they can dominate, they, not dominate, but they can inflict themselves on you against your will. And it's the kundalini that allows this to occur, once again, 
because of the divine person you are being transformed into, this new person, this butterfly, does is not going to be allowed to have its its intimate components dominated by fear. You don't get to do that with Kundalini. This is the path that saints have walked. And you know, you know a lot of these, these saints had a really hard time with it because they didn't have a teacher except for the Kundalini and their belief system. And so I want you to understand this. It's not the easiest path. It is a very, very difficult path at times. But you're getting clear information here. Use it. Take it in. Go to the website and read some of the writings that are on the website that I described to you earlier. Ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. I've got nine minutes left here now. If anybody has a question about entities, call up. The number is 347-934-0026. I'll continue to speak, but I want those of you who have a question to call up that number. Entities themselves are often used by the divine without their knowledge. As I mentioned previously, Kundalini will will allow a person to have entity contact in order to discern, for the person to discern their true values, their true uh, responses to negative programming. Kundalini will allow this to allow you to make the proper choices. The choices are high ethics, high morality within your culture or your system of understanding where you live. So let that, let, let your ethics teach you in these areas. Once again, um, with the, with the entities, they can also guide your your uh, diet, and I don't want you to I don't want you to open yourself to that guide. So open to the Kundalini itself, and the Kundalini will, will typically respond in bliss or a, or a sudden knowingness. But if you're being told to drink alcohol, or do marijuana, or do drugs of any kind, resist that. That is not part of your system right now. Once you have Kundalini, you don't need to keep taking ayahuasca or alcohol or nicotine or pharmaceutical drugs, you know, and, you know, now the medical quality that that uh, remains to be seen. Like if, if you're taking SSRIs, then I would certainly not uh, recommend that within a Kundalini context. I'm not an MD, and so I'm not going to, I'm not going to, uh, uh, you know, make give anybody medical advice, but I am going to say that within a Kundalini context, SSRIs are not beneficial. Okay, uh, don't do anything of a dietary nature that is hurtful to you. That will not come from the Kundalini. Once again, so you know, with that understanding. With that understanding, I want you to be clear. Uh, we have a a, uh, a retreat that we are forming uh, that will be coming up in April. And if there is anybody who would like to uh, come to this retreat, come to this uh, gathering of Kundalini people, I want you to to write to uh, Kundalini Matters, all one word, K U N D A L I N I. M A T T E R S at Gmail dot com. That's Kundalini Matters at Gmail dot com. Uh, come and, and partake of teachings or, or or Kundalini invitations or it's it's an amazing thing to be around Kundalini people. They are the sweetest, nicest people on the planet, I guarantee you. And so if you if you would like to partake of of a really beautiful weekend or beautiful number of days, uh, seriously consider coming to a Kundalini retreat. And once again, you can talk, uh, you can express your interest if you go to uh, Kundalini Matters at gmail.com. Um, I have five minutes left. If there's a, 
a person that has an entity issue or a question about entities, please call in. The number is 347-934-0026. Um, with the entities, you can see them as shadowy figures often. Uh, they will float above you or stand around you. Uh, not so different from from what we would understand a ghost to do. Uh, not so much of a temperature drop as some of the ghosts do. But, uh, you know, you will have, you'll feel it. You'll feel it before you see it. And, you'll, and, and you know, the skin may respond. The hair follicles will stand up. Uh, and you'll, you'll definitely feel it before you see it. And you may not see it at all. But there will be a sensation that you can recognize as, as like a, an entity alert that your body will give out. Uh, pay attention to that. Don't be afraid just because you can't see it. I know we're a, we're a sight-oriented society, so so when we can't see anything, when we're blind, that oh my gosh, you know, you know, we we can jump into fear. Once again, I don't want you to jump into fear. You stay fearless. There's no reason for you to jump into fear. Your kundalini is with you. Your kundalini wants you to evolve. Your kundalini wants you to be successful in this. And it will help you. As alone as you may feel at times, you are not alone. You are never alone, actually. Privacy is very different within a, a spiritual understanding. There is no privacy. Okay. Uh, everything is seen. Everything is heard. Okay, everything is known, but not known by everything. You know, your babysitter doesn't know, you know, what's been going on with you. you the same with discarnates. Some discarnates can get into your head, some can't. Okay, it doesn't matter. What matters is how you stick to your high ethical, moral values. Really, this is the supreme measure of evolution within the Kundalini. The higher your ethics are, the greater your evolution is. And if these ethics are love-based, the greater your Kundalini development will be. So really go out of your way. Next week, uh, on February 13th, I will be talking about divine love. This will be a, it will be a whole conversation about divine love. And, and I want you to really, really tune in Tune into that conversation. It's very important, extremely important. It, it's it's one of these areas of Kundalini that is, is vastly misunderstood, and there are some areas that that this needs to be given some some clear uh, information, clear knowledge with. Uh, and so next week we will be talking about divine love. Uh, not surprisingly, the day before Valentine's the day before Valentine's Day in the West. Uh, I would like to thank everybody who has been listening to this. I would like to thank uh, uh, Fashti and Eileen for calling in to let me know that that we are indeed uh, going out there. I'd like to thank uh, the people who listen in the archives. Hello, archive people. Uh, you are appreciated. And, it's, and I'm happy to, to see that you are listening and, to, and that you're taking this information in. Do not be afraid of entities. Do not be afraid of entities. You are not sick. You're not mentally ill. You're not having a spiritual emergency except, you know, through the medical context of it. You are not going crazy. Okay, you're having a spiritual experience. You're having a kundalini-induced uh, spiritual experience. And you have choices. You have very, very positive choices that you can make in this context. Uh, go to Kundalini Awakening Systems, the number one dot com, and go to the safeties. If you look on the uh, left-hand margin, you'll see that there's a uh, an option called the safeties. Go there. Go to YouTube and look up Chrism and then the number zero, Kundalini, 
on YouTube and watch the videos that I put out, over 200 videos. So look at this. Know this. Take this in. This is positive information for you to have within your Kundalini awakening process. And I want to wish you well. And I want to let you go with love, bliss, grace, and truth. And many, many thanks for listening to this radio broadcast. Thank you, everyone.